My name is Sam Long. I'm a high school science teacher and a transgender man, and I'm co-founder of the Colorado Transgender Non-Binary Educators Network. Most people haven't thought about trans educators, but we do exist and we are in schools teaching children every day. We came up with five best practices for educators and especially school leaders to support and learn from trans educators. Remember that you're not the expert and so it's important that you do your homework. When I transitioned at the school that I was working for, I wasn't in a place where I could elaborate and state specifically how I wanted to go about with my transition. The school administrators and the higher ups, they took on creating a plan themselves. Weeks before school started, they presented a plan of action and what was going to take place. And the plan that they had created was invasive. It totally outed me to people that didn't need to know about my transition. It created space for people to speak hate about me. I felt trapped. I felt like it was too late to provide feedback. I felt like this was the only way that I was going to be able to continue working at the school that I was at. And so ultimately I decided to leave because I didn't feel like I had a voice in the plan that was created. I think while their heart was in the right place, all of that came from a lack of perspective. If they had just sought out more perspectives and a little bit more knowledge, uh, I think we could have worked something out. I feel a very important thing that school leaders need to know about supporting trans people is that there is going to be personal work to understand any undercurrents of prejudice or predetermined ideas about what the trans experience is all about. We had a discussion at our school about starting a GSA. And so when we talked about being any sort of resource with the GSA, not even necessarily facilitating it, but being any sort of resource, the principal said, we're concerned about issues of indoctrination. And indoctrination, of course, is code for we're concerned that you're going to be grooming kids sexually. And it took me weeks to realize that that context was not there for them. They did not mean it the way that I heard it. It didn't change the way that I felt targeted. It didn't change the fact that I didn't want to work at the school anymore. If you're going to work, with folks in the trans experience, you need to understand the things that are going to fracture those relationships. Be proactive about implementing systems that include everyone. For example, sharing your pronouns in your network opening or in your school opening. Offer pronouns as an opportunity for people to talk about and share a component of their identity. Also be cognizant of not making that mandatory giving people an opportunity to opt into a community or opt into expressing a piece of their identity is really valuable and empowering. But if you don't model and actually implement that process, then it's not gonna be effective either. Share the work of creating an inclusive school climate. It's more than just changing a single bathroom in your school to gender neutral. Right. It's actually going out and engaging with all individuals, parents, other teachers, students who are resistant and actually talking with them and showing us through your actions and not just having a conversation with that person in your office behind closed doors. What's going to help us do our jobs in the best possible way is if you get the help you need. Yeah, asking us is cool, but really it'd be better to reach out to a consultant or resources in your district. Be like, hey, I have this awesome educator that I wanna learn how to learn and grow with and make them feel safe and supported so that they can do the same for our kids because that's their job. Official policy that takes care of both transgender students and staff is really important. Changing name on documents and information systems um, can be world changing professionally for transgender teachers, educators, everyone within the district, especially things like email, where you are in communication with your coworkers and you maybe don't want to be out as your dead name and you want to make sure that you are having a professional relationship without that being something that gets in the way of your communication. Dead naming is using a name that was given at birth that somebody chooses not to use anymore. It can sometimes out someone who otherwise was not open as transgender. Being dead named opens a lot of doors for uncomfortable, intimate conversations that a lot of people don't want to have. It'd be really important to have a model policy to go off of, largely because it can be exhausting to reinvent the wheel. You know, if there's already options out there that you can use to help you kind of figure out what you need, that helps make sure that you have all your bases covered, that helps make sure that you don't have to take all the stress of trying to be the expert on something. 
Toronto, Chicago, and LA Unified are a few model policies that already have a language for updating names on data systems and for including staff as well as students in their policies. Every day I'm living proof to my students that it's possible to be a uh, happy, healthy, successful, living trans adult. I know this generation of young people is going to grow up with a different idea of what's possible for a trans person.